God, who's that? Your new private secretary, John. No, I mean that. Sir Peyton Grindley Whitaker. Hyphenated? I'm afraid so. He served Lord Castlereagh after Waterloo, especially at the Congress of Vienna. He helped make sure the defeated French were humanely treated. We may need another like him before long. Now, John, meet Dowling. Lincoln Dowling, Sir John Wilder. How do you do? Well, how's the club taken my appointment? The club? Keep your tongue out of your cheek, Dowling. We might come in very well together. The club, the career diplomats. And they don't like these appointments from outside. What you mean is that they're plotting like mad to stop them and me. There is a consensus for giving plum jobs to professionals. Well put, darling. Always assuming that this is a plum job. Three. Hardly the place to take Pamela, John. One via Zurich. Via Zurich? Are you out of hearing, darling? Well, what are you waiting for? John, you learned that this department is not rich in men of Dowling's caliber. Well, you ought to know. You planted him. He's the best at his rank. Now, he also knows Whitehall, and he knows the diplomatic service. And he's out to know what I'm doing. If you didn't put him in here to check on me, Somebody else put him in here to check on both of us. I smell scandal. You never did with Philby. That was rather below the belt, darling. I know the Wilders. They're dangerous outsiders. With luck, Malia frightened him off, from all I, I hear. I can't honestly say he went pale with fright. Oh, Kerr, darling, he's experienced. My briefing says he's never gambled in his life. I trust he hasn't succeeded in mesmerizing you already. I told him I'd book two seats on tomorrow's flight. He told me to book a third. A third? A third man? Or a woman. Who? I should imagine his wife. Oh. Well, if so, she goes at his expense. She can afford it, Fowler. She's a woman of enormous personal wealth. Oh. And I hear considerable presence. Malia is no place for women. Nor for men, unless they're travelling in tanks. I suppose that your vaccinations are all up to date. I'm not going anywhere for you again, John. Oh, yes, you are. This was the last opportunity I'd have to do something here. Well, what do you think, darling? All you need is your own private lift. get on well with my wife. I like her. Diplomatically spoken, Lincoln. The job is not otherwise full of compensations. It is not done to chug it in. You stick things out. Stiff up a lip all over your face. Something like that. British mining is under new management. Don't talk to me about that deadbeat lot. Bob Slater is the new chairman. Is he? And he's making changes. He'll top what you get here. Never. That whole dump is riddled with mousy accountants. Not any longer. You can come back as joint managing director with special responsibility for surveys. And a lump sum when you were joined from British mining shares of 50,000 pounds. I don't think I can face going back to all that privilege and snobbery. Your son's name is down for two public schools. I could see that he was accepted by either. All I want is a detailed summary of your survey. Wilder can give dinner to the entire city of London. They'll choke when he tells them what's behind it. Don't you be too sure. Wilder's got a very persuasive tongue. And just in case he should be able to raise this initial money, I want a convincing counter from this office. Now, as Deputy Under Secretary, you're responsible for my briefing. Well, I should have thought, Minister, that Anderovia being what it is, the chances of counter-revolution in the very near future are at least rosy. 
Well, then find out. Find out how rosy. Yes, Minister. And they do have centrally heated bedrooms. That's why you asked me here this evening, isn't it? To find out why you didn't want me there either. But the truth is, I don't know. Don't private secretaries in the diplomatic service always travel with their ambassadors? Yes, they do. That's what I thought. Sir? Well, if there's any consolation, I'm sure as a man, it's nothing to do with the Ferguson woman. Nothing personal, I mean. If it had, my respect for his taste and judgment would require a fairly drastic rethink. I want to talk to you. <laughs> well, how long is it since we've had time for that? In broad daylight. It's almost simple. Don't you feel misbehaving? I need some money. And I mean a lot. Uh, so it didn't work? Oh, it worked. But they'd feel better if I committed all that I can raise, plus yours. If my wife chooses to invest risk capital... Risk? There isn't any, barring a revolution. What makes you say that? You got that stuff from Harwood. Which you better not have seen. You wouldn't be pushing so hard if Harwood's report hadn't been encouraging. You'll have to learn that I'm a risk taker. You certainly are. You and your wife cannot dabble for private gain in matters you're promoting as a public servant. I watch you, Lincoln. I note your efficiency, your manners, and your contempt. And I promise myself that when I time, when I'm ready, I lower your flag. Go on. Report it. You know I have no choice. Right. Let's see how Pamela likes your transformation from juvenile lead to office sneak. He doesn't want me out. He wants me to sweat and fry it out in some outpost of the modern Commonwealth. Uh, incidentally, your appointment with Lord Bly. No, I'll go in now. Well, it's cancelled. You can start getting up to your delicate ears in work for me. You didn't really think that I'd let him throw me to the dogs. I can only assume from that you broke confidence with Harwood. And you would be wrong. Well, you surprise me. <laughs> and Arobia is not the only survey that Harvard has been associated with. I might want something on his surveys of Australia and the Arctic. You'll learn, darling. But you've a hell of a long way to go.